everybody. Welcome to Painting Happy Little Minis. I'm Gretchen. I'm Dave. And today we are finishing up our monster apocalypse. Yay! Dave cheated and brought his home. I did. <laughs> I took it home so that I could paint the, um, so on her, I painted the little, uh, and the aerial, the tower mm -hmm. that she's holding as a club. And I painted the, uh, the little tank on the base. Um, so I matched both of those to the box art. So that was nice and simple. And I uh, finished off the, the ammunition that is uh, around her. So the only thing that I need to do now, the only two, there are two things I need to do. One is the hair and two is the Hawaiian shirt. Which we're gonna give her. Uh, we voted oh, on. Sorry, give me one oh, we're gonna give Leona a little bit more time. But so that's what we're, we're gonna work on tonight. And Christian, what are you gonna do with yours? Uh, so I am going to finish up uh, his flesh here, uh, that lovely radical green. Radical. Yeah. Radical. A can of surge. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and start adding highlights to that and make it a lot more dynamic. And then um, I don't know. I might. You last time you had the suggestion of leaving his horns uh, black. Yeah. Which yeah. I think looks really nice. So I might leave him black. Who knows? We'll find out. Yep. I think I think it'll look good. Yeah. Nice and uh, vicious. <laughs> vicious. Okay, oh. Leona has some some photos of the shirts. We're gonna put them up so that there was it was a tie. The poll brought put us a tie between shirt one, the, the classic uh, look, red with uh, I think these are hibiscus. Yes. The large yeah. ones are hibiscus, and the small one is, I, I think frangipanis. I could be wrong. Or shirt two, which is a, a much more radical kind of style. Very bright. Super bright. Very colorful. Not gonna lie, I like number two. Yeah. Shirt I'm kind of leaning towards two. number two, but I got out a whole bunch of paints tonight so that I can have, um, I could do either one. So. Gotcha. We are gonna do leave Do we want that the chat to vote? Yep, so if they, everybody who's in the chat, who have we got? We've got uh, Josh Potter, we've got Lucafio, uh, we've got Roger, howdy Roger, uh, we have Jason, we have Sean. So, everybody, we've got a, a quick vote. <gasps> Facebook user is saying shirt two, which is the purple one here. Purple Yeet. slash magenta. This is number two. Shirt two. Also, hello, hello. Facebook user. I will get you the link you need. <laughs> <laughs> no, somebody's saying shirt three. No, shirt three is no longer an option. <laughs> shirt three, three was my original preference. I would totally have gone for shirt three. That's, that was the uh, like the pale blue with the flamingos, but nobody wanted the flamingos. Bit of a shame. Uh, so we have shirt two, shirt two, 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 and one. Sorry, look after you. Look like you're the only one. Going for one tonight. I think we're gonna have to go for. I think it's gonna be shirt two. Da, 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 da. Shirt two. Shirt two it is. Yes. Let's do it. I'm happy. <laughs> You're happy? Yes. That's good. That's the most important thing. Leona is happy. <laughs> good stuff. Happy producer makes the rest of the show work. That's fair. Reasonably well. <laughs> Oh, and uh, Facebook user saying, Facebook is no longer showing my name this week. This is Tim. Oh, no. Don't worry, Tim. I'm going to get you the link you need. Excellent. All right. So, yes. We are all summer, summered out with Dave's Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Ready for summer. I was going to say, when he said all summered out, it was like... the heat wave. We've, we've still got a lot of, a lot of summer to go. Yeah, maybe that was the wrong way to <laughs> say that. Just, just maybe. We've got two and a half months of summer. Oh my goodness. It's gonna be I'm crazy. ready. I'm excited. Oh yeah, it should be great. It's finally July, and you know what that means? No. My birthday month. Christmas <gasps> in July? I have to celebrate... <laughs> Gretchen's birthday all month. Oh! Birthday month! 
That's right. Congratulations. I don't know what day my birthday actually lands on this year. I don't know if it's, I don't think I've ever had a birthday land on the show. No. Yeah. I admit, I can't remember if I have. I don't think I have. But that's okay. It'll happen one day. One day. And then you'll all have to make me a cake. <laughs> a mini cake? A mini cake? No, a big cake. Like a bigature. <laughs> <laughs> it can be shaped like a mini. Um, it needs to be huge. So yes, it looks like in the what's up on there that I mixed in some yellow, but I haven't. It is um, a scorpina green. Oh, scorpion green. Yeah. Excellent. So no actual yellow mixed in. This color here looks yellow, very, very yellow up on the screen, but that's just livery green. Um, no actual yellow as of yet. Right. And I feel like against the, oh, maybe he's talking about, yeah, it's just the camera. I'm looking at it now. Yeah, it's just a little, um. Against the teal, it really looks yellow. Yeah. yeah. It's got, a, it does have a lot of yellow in it. It does. It's, it's like sure. a lime, limey green. Yeah. Um. It's very key lime pie. That's yes. summer. Yeah, it is That's summer. A summer dessert. It is. I made, um, it was called lemon icebox cake. Ooh, that's really yummy. I've had that before. Yeah, it was so good. Oh, I, well, technically it was the pie. Okay. It's, apparently the cake and the pie are a little bit different. Okay. The pie is just like straight lemon yumminess. Um, highly recommend. <laughs> Excellent. Did you take that on your camping trip? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I did not. Oh, that's a shame. Yes, I did go on a camping trip last weekend. It was lovely. Excellent. It was a lot of fun. It was, even though it rained. It was still fun. <laughs> That's good. I had good company. Cool. Did you get some hiking in? Yes. It was in Northern Maryland, uh, a park up there. Okay. And um, they don't actually have a very long hikes. Like the three mile hike is the longest one. Okay. Uh, but we did do that, and that was fun. Excellent. It's more, it's right on the water, so you can do more water activities. Right. Not that I did, but we, I swam. Okay. <laughs> I haven't gotten a chance to go swimming yet, and I really would love to. I enjoy yeah. swimming. This is definitely the weather for it. Because now the water is warm enough. Yeah. Yeah. We were afraid that it was going to be like freezing. <laughs> 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 but it was nice and warm. That's good. I'd hope yeah. so with the heat we've been having. Yeah. I'm a little bit worried. Next, next week, I'm uh, thinking the family we're going up to. Uh, Maine, and I think my uh, daughter's going to want to go swimming in the ocean. Are you, are oh. you not an ocean swimming kind of guy? Um, no, I'm okay not in swimming in the ocean, but, but in Maine. <laughs> not in Maine. In early summer. <laughs> yep. It's I like, suspect that there's like a two-week window. It's like, what, 68 <laughs> degrees? <laughs> like, it's like really cold. Yeah, it's going to be a bit 65. chilly. <laughs> I was taken aback when I went to California, and... It was like 90 degrees out, and then we went to go jump in the ocean, and the ocean was cold. Like, I knew that the water was supposed to be colder. Right. But I, I figured if it was like 90 degrees out, <laughs> it wouldn't be that much colder. It'd be like a, like a really nice 76 or something. And I, was, right. I was very wrong. I was right. so wrong. <laughs> I, um, I learned a new fun fact that day, which was... 
oh boy, is it cold in California when you're used to like <laughs> swimming in Florida. <laughs> right. Yep. I thought for a second that you were going to say you learned some new cuss words, but. Uh, no, no, I was nope. 18. I already knew them you all. You already knew them all? Yeah. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> also, real quick, I want to say hello to Gary and also JT and Tim. We can see your names now. Good stuff. Yep. All good. Oh, also hello to Sumkey. Can't stay long, so just going to lurk. No problem. Okay. No problem. Cool. <laughs> yes, yes, we are definitely uh, city dwellers there, Lucafio. Getting <laughs> heated water. Heated water? Heated water, yep. There's not, I said Florida. Yeah, Florida well, that's, that's heats heated its water. own water. <laughs> I hope it's water. Um, it's certainly it's heated. But it's naturally heated in Florida. Well, especially <laughs> if you're on the Gulf. The Gulf side? Yeah. Yep. Like, dang, that is warm water. That is what I grew up with. I think the last time I went swimming in Florida, it was, um, the water was like 86 degrees. Yeah. Wow. Was, yeah. I like to use the word tepid. <laughs> Everyone was like, this isn't refreshing at all. And I'm really sensitive to cold. <laughs> I was like, yes, finally. <laughs> I can be My warm when I'm swimming. Chattering. Cool. Yeah, I'm not, I don't like it when it's that warm. I guess I'm pretty fussy. But it's okay. So, you know what we're painting? You can see the base purple going down there. Um, what's everybody who is watching, everybody in the chat, what are you uh, painting this evening? Or how is your how are your dinner preparations going? Yes. So I bet you Luke Carfio is making dinner. JT might be making dinner too. Well, let us know. So now I've got that, I can start mixing in the Warlord Purple. So Gretchen, do you have like... Um, what, what exactly are you doing with the light green? Like where are you putting it? I am putting it everywhere so he has a bunch of scales you can kind of see oh, it best over okay. here yeah so i'm going through and i am popping it up on every raised little scale and then i'm also doing more of a blend on the bits where i think the light would hit so on like the muscly bits up here so if i turn him catacornered this way you can kind of see oh yeah where I've built up more of that kind of extreme highlight. And then I'm gonna go back in with some of the original green and diffuse it just a pinch. And then I'm gonna go in and pinpoint um, on those scales with the very, very bright limey green that is confused for yellow. I promise it's lime green. Dave can vouch. Yep, it's looking green on the screen there. Yeah, yeah. Um, and get those really, that'll be for like the very, very fine highlights. Um, awesome. But yeah, cool. and then, as you can see, the, his, his belly isn't painted yet. Um, his claws aren't painted. I'm not really worried about getting any paint on them, because if I keep it, if I keep his horns black, that's not gonna, I can tidy that up. Um, I am being careful around the orange, though, because I already painted that, and I want that to stay nice and tidy and um, vibrant, because I really like how it came out. Yep. Looks great. Yeah, it looks awesome. Kind of remind me, reminding me of Reptar. Uh, what? <laughs> of Reptar from um, uh, Rugrats. I was gonna say, is that Rugrat? <laughs> Rugrats. <Okay. laughs> um, yep. Yeah, I'm, I got I'm gonna that. say it must That's be because American I don't know what you're talking cartoon. about. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> mine. American cartoon. Everyone else knows what I'm talking about. Yeah, I do. Cool. Good for them. <laughs> Excellent. So what have we got? Uh, okay. Oh, JT is working on a Blight Lord Terminators for the uh, Death Guard army that he's been painting up. Uh, Tim is continuing on the 
non-metallic metal training. Tonight is with wet blending using contrast paint only. Ooh, that yeah. should be interesting. Very cool. You have some fun with the contrast paints. Uh, Gary has been working on terrain for Gaslands. That's cool. What sort of terrain are you doing, Gary? Are you doing um, like scrap piles? Are you doing hills and mesas to sort of drive the cars around in the desert? Um, Jason's still working on his uh, young Remores. Uh, Josh organizes rule books in the new game room. That must be nice. It's always going to be fun when you say, I have a new game room. <laughs> and you get to organize it from scratch. Fantastic. Uh, Jason said it. it they also finished, uh, recently finished the dice tower crafted from an old Pringles can. That's cool. That is pretty cool. What did you, um, what did you put inside it to make the little angles to bounce the dice? You'll have to let us know. Um, oh, McCarthy said it. That was close. <laughs> having a sandwich tonight as a prep food for annual barbecue with family on Saturday. Fantastic. Uh, Roger, you want guess what I'm doing? I was going to say painting monumental stuff or monument stuff, but you're probably also getting ready for a game. Could be wrong. Um, oh, Sean's says his mouth is numb. He's had to have a rear tooth pulled. Oh no. That's not good. I recently got that, ex not the, the extraction experience, but the numb mouth experience because I had to have a filling done for the first time in my life. Right. And that was weird. I had never had my mouth numb before. Right. Um. I, I'm not sure if I have, which probably means that I haven't. I, I feel like you would know. I was going to say, you would know. You would remember it? You would definitely remember. It was it was really interesting because I have a low tolerance to, like, numbing medication. So right. the poor dentist was like, I'm going to give you a full dose. And then gave me half a dose. And then was like, I'm not going to give you a full dose. <laughs> 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 Your entire face is numb. Oh, <laughs> Uh, okay, keep talking. Oh, I'm talking. Oh, 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 I'm talking. Um, <laughs> and then it just stayed numb. He was like, yeah. "It'll, it won't stay numb." And I was like, "It's definitely number longer than you said it was gonna be." <laughs> right. Nice. That's fine though. That's better when you have some kind of dental procedure. Yeah. So hopefully it's uh, it won't stay numb for too long, and yet the pain won't come back when the numbness goes. Fingers crossed. Uh, Tim says that uh, contrast is easy uh, is easy mode for non-metallic gold, as it turns out. That's true. There's a lot of um, great colors you can use there. The uh, Nasdrag yellow and uh, snakebite leather, I think, are probably two of the better ones. Uh, but steel is super giving me problems, particularly with the contrast. I think it doesn't. There's not a huge range of grays. There's only there are like three essentially. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, it'd be a little bit more difficult to, to get that control over it. But uh, you have to post some pictures of your uh, progress with it. Yeah, now we're all going to be curious. Yep, definitely curious. Waiting with bated breath. <laughs> yes. I saw Andrew Roger Moore said, yes, of course, both. It's just painting monument and preparing for a game. Oh, Okay. Interesting. So rather than putting panels inside the dice tower, mm -hmm. you know, you usually have to bounce them back and forth. Um, Jason put, uh, he said, spiraled wooden skewers to roll the dice around. That's cool. So it's almost like they go down a spiral staircase. That's really that cool. That is pretty neat. I have not seen that before. Uh, oh, Gary said that his work, uh, the terrain that he was creating for Gaslands was a billboard and hillside with with a cactus and a, I'm not sure. Autocorrect has, uh, has struck, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, Tim, if you're able to um, put it into the, get a shot in your light box and just pop it up in the group tomorrow, that's cool. Doesn't have to be 
You don't have to rush tonight or anything. Up to you. But, We're here uh, every week. Yep. <laughs> And throughout the week. Well, we're not here throughout the week. The owner is, but not us. That would be cool. So it sounds like a lot of uh, fun stuff is happening. Yeah. Definitely good. I've been painting a few more skeletons at home. And assembling some more wolves. Getting some more work done on my soul blight grave lords. So I can start to play some practice games. Oh, I got to go to Game Light last night. That's Very fun. exciting. So, yeah. Um, Pre-pandemic, we used to have a game night that I would go to every other week on Thursday nights. Uh, and then, of course, pandemic hit, and we stopped doing that. And we finally made the return. Yay. But, yeah, very exciting. Uh, but uh, we've returned on Wednesday nights. Which is also super cool. <laughs> so I can get game night and come and paint. That's a good. And last night we played some Saga Age of Magic. Which was very cool. I think there are eight of us playing. So it was very nice. I don't think we had a, we didn't really have a proper scenario that my opponent and I were playing. So we just played until we sort of killed everybody. Fair enough. Wiped all the models off the table. We haven't played for, for that long. It's like, no, let's just keep going. But it was good. Very nice. Okay. Would you have to put up the um, the photo of the of shirt number two again, Leona? Yeah. I just want to see how how purple, how magenta. Ooh, okay. I have to make it quite magenta. <laughs> it is super vibrant. Radio. I can do that. Adding some more pink. More pink. More pink. More of the well, more of the warlord purple. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just more of this. I can still leave the uh, the hex lichen in the uh, in the shadows, but we need to make sure that those highlights are really intensely wall of purple. But I'm going to get all that down first, and then I think based on that the shirt, the next thing would be the uh, green palm leaves, palm fronds, and then the there are some some on there that are white, like a whitish sort of finish with um, green on the the tips. So that'll be fun to work that out. I'm definitely very glad that I took her home and finished off all the other pieces. <laughs> I'm sitting over here like, it'll be fine. I'll get there. You'll get oh. there. Have you got, a, got any thoughts about what you're going to do for the belly of the... I don't know. Part of me says leave it black so it matches with the horns and then maybe do his actual, like, claws as orange. Okay. And then part of me is like, no, make it orange to match. Um... So, I don't know. Right now I'm adding a wee bit of purple in... For like where the darkest shadows are. Okay. And trying to blend that as. Go into the green. Or... Yeah. Oh, cool. Very, just a very smidgen. Like a very subtle kind of look. Yeah. I don't want anything crazy, but I I think this particular purple, when it comes to being like the shadow color, um, does a really nice job with the screen. Cool. Look at that. Leona has uh, found a way to have a picture in picture in picture. That is because Leona is amazing. She is amazing, isn't she? Check that out. Thank you, Leona. I appreciate it. Well, I figured even if you don't necessarily need it, 
then people in the uh, on the stream yep. can know what you're painting. Sure. But I can enlarge. I can make it larger. If no, you no, want. that's fine. That's all good. Okay. I think that um, the next so the first step then would be the those white palm fronds. Oh. Then the green over the top, and then the flowers. Cool. Would be the final final stage, I think. I can almost like line it up next to it and see. Oh, yeah. um, it needs to be brighter. Might um, actually mix a little bit of white in. Yeah. Oh. It came out a little bit quicker than I was expecting. <laughs> well, good thing I need a lot of white for later. <laughs> Oh, there we go. It's getting quite in intense there. Yep. That'll be looking good. Nice. Okay. I'm definitely um, looking forward to seeing some photos of, um, of Gary's uh, Gaslands terrain. When you post those up in the group, Gary. It's been a while since I played Gaslands. So. Now that the gaming group is back, I think we might play some games of it. Let's see if we can play some games of it after we finish our saga campaign. be fun. They are fun. Um, Tim has put uh, put a picture of the mini up in the group already, so folks can go and check that out. We'll have a look at that uh, later tonight. Um, look how he said, I think Leona has the mini that I sent in last week. The chain mail in non-metallic metal with a trick you guys taught me. Ooh. I don't know which, I can't remember which trick that is. Which trick did we tell, teach the coffee? We've, we've done quite a few tips and tricks over the course of this show. This is true. I can't remember which one it is. But we'll it see it in the end. Uh, the like dry brushing. Oh, okay. Dry brushing with the chain mail? I think with the so. Texture. We'll see it. We'll see it. We'll be fine. Um, cool. Oh, and Gary says maybe you'll have uh, the terrain ready for, to show next week. That would be great. Be very cool to see. Okay. It's getting there. It's almost that shirt color. Yeah. It is actually. I think the the tough part with um, with painting on. Hawaiian shirt like that is that um, the the patterns are all printed on that with with their own sort of shading so their own levels of intensity so then applying that over the, the um, all of the different curved surfaces here of the, the shirt is going to be uh, fun and I say fun with a uh, with huge air quotes around it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit worried now. Also, I have a question for JT. Sorry, oh. this is not. Oh, go for it. Either of you. <laughs> um, you submitted two photos. Do you want me to show the plague burst crawler or the other one? Just let me know in the chat. And also, hello, Lava Painter. Oh, Thanks excellent. For joining. Hey, Ayumi. And Sash is coming along. Check it out. And I also have to work out, still work out what color I'm going to do with her hair. Oh, yeah. 
I think by the time I get done with the uh, the bright shirt, blonde, brown. I can do blonde or brown, or I, I'm just thinking that by the time I get done with the bright shirt, that maybe the uh, the black is going to be the way to go. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> just a, yeah, that's fair. This is a balance against it. I guess I was thinking if you really wanted like colorful but also contrast, that's where the blonde. Yeah, the blonde would work well against the um, the purple, would right? Be. Yeah. Yeah, good call. We might have to go with that. Okay, well, I think that's a pretty good base there for her. Oh. Uh, oh, there we go. Um, JT says, do the Plague Burst Crawler. That'd be cool. Uh, Jason says, this looks like a Cali girl, blonde. Uh, in terms of dark hair with a green streak. That could be fun too. Could be. We'll give it a little bit of time. We can marinate on it. Okay. So now, I'm going to start with some light gray as a like a base for the um for the palm fronds though those white palm fronds i'm going to start also by using the um gw artificer layer brush the extra small size so there we can see it it is teeny, teeny tiny. And if I find that this is uh, sort of too small, I can always move up to the, the size one from Broken Toad, but at least this way, if it's just the right size, I'm, I'm good. Rather than starting too large. Yes. Where am I going to begin? I'm going to pick a spot on the sleeve. Just get stuck in there. Okay. Well, we know that uh, Leona went camping over the weekend. Did you get up to anything fun? Did I get up to anything fun? Yeah. No, not really. No? No. Knock everything down. Um, <laughs> no, uh, well, I did. I went horseback riding. Okay. I did that. That was yeah, fun. Yeah. That's cool. Um, I haven't been back in the saddle in a while because um, I've just been working. <laughs> yep. So that was a really nice, um, really nice time. But other than that, no, not too much. Just, um, just hung out. Did the gardening thing, did the did the horseback riding thing, did a little bit of uh, swords work on the, uh, I have a, like, dummy in the backyard okay. target set up. Um, so. Excellent. Gardened. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That is cool. We also didn't do much this weekend because we were sandwiched in between us heading away for a week, leaving this coming weekend, and when we went camping two weeks ago now, almost. So it's always nice to have those those weekends where you don't don't have anything planned, you don't actually get up to anything. I think. Yeah, it was very nice. It's definitely good to just relax around the house. Nice. I meant that I got to watch some more of my Game of Thrones rewatch. Going <laughs> <Can> through. You... <laughs> hmm? <laughs> um, 
horseback riding code for jousting. And then Curry says, can you do <laughs> weird, do weird a lance? I can, because I cannot actually use a lance. So it would be very weird. Um, so I actually, I don't do jousting. I do do mounted combat. Um, but I do not do jousting. Um, I do saber on horseback. Um, if I, if I wield anything on a horse. Um, so, uh, jousting is not really my wheelhouse. Um, I have friends who are jousters. Well, and it is who the, do the whole jousting thing. It is the state sport of Maryland. It is. <laughs> For everybody who didn't know that. No, you do. I like how both Leona and I say, it is, <laughs> isn't it? So <laughs> nice for jousters. Um, I don't want to be involved in any horseback riding activities where I fall off the horse that often. Right. Um, it is really, really hard on your body and on your joints. And uh, I have horrible joints. So, not going to do that. I commend the people who do, though. They're rad. And I have several friends who are jousters and jousters in training. Excellent. I have a friend who's a jouster. But I'm not sure. I can't remember the last time I saw him joust. But I think it was at the Maryland Renaissance Fair. Say It's uh, been a while since anyone I know who jousts has been able to do anything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fingers crossed they'll be able to do it again this, uh, this fall. Yeah, it looks like the Run Fest. It looks like it's on? The Run Fest is happening. Excellent. August. That'll be good. Into September. Oh, I'm so excited. That'll be fun. Are you going for the jousting, Leona? Um, yes. <laughs> the jousting or the turkey legs? The turkey legs. <laughs> right. I usually go by and I have a few friends who work the, the Ren Fair. Um, either as, um, weirdly enough, all of my hobbies cross over. <laughs> <laughs> um, so no. I... I happen to just have a lot of, of people that I just know when I show up at conventions, <laughs> ren fairs, and um, just it'd be weird. The Venn diagram is very <laughs> efficient. It keeps but crossing. It does. It really does. Um, but uh, I happen to know some of the blacksmiths that um, show up at the ren fair a lot. Um, Excellent. And so I go and I always say hi to them. And then I know some of the fur tradesmen. Um, so I go and say hi to them. And then um, I know some of the professional mermaids. So then I go. <laughs> Wait, there are professional mermaids? There are. There are professional mermaids. And um, I actually got my lifeguard certification with them. Wow. Um, which was amazing. Um, and a really cool experience to just like. Be in a pool with a bunch of professional mermaids. <laughs> that is wild. Yeah, they they go to ren fairs or they get hired out for birthday parties or other events or aquariums. Um, I I specifically know the ones associated with Circus Siren Pod. Okay. So they're an actual like pod. pod. Um, a, pod a pod of <laughs> of professional professional mermaids. mermaids. Yes, they have their own tank set up and everything, and they go to all the ren fairs. Um, so they're really amazing. They're cool. Fantastic. Um, but yeah, uh, so I just go say hi to them, and then I, <laughs> I just beep up around. <laughs> Excellent. Oh yeah, you can also, uh, Josh Potter says, uh, also buy handmade arrows for my handmade longbow. Yes, my fiance actually shoots a 110 pound uh, like draw for his longbow. Um, and he got it at the ring fair because there is a lovely woman who makes handmade bows. Fantastic. Um, all historically and whatnot. Yeah. So. Is his bow of you? I don't or... know. I can't, I mean, I can like, I can pull it back a little bit, but I definitely am not pulling back the 110 draw weight. He can pull back the 110 draw weight and it's yeah. terrifying to see because <laughs> he is... Not a large man, so 
a lot of people will be like, oh, I can pull. It, it's like that one Greek myth where everyone's like, I can draw back the bow. Right. And oh, yeah. um, no, right. they're like struggling. It's really funny. Yep. <laughs> so a lot of it's technique, right? <laughs> Josh Potter, wait, mermaids have a tank? Um, if you're going inland, they require yeah. it. <laughs> yep. I watched this, um, I watched this really cool documentary about the longbow yep. and the Japanese samurai bow, which I forget okay. what that's called. Is it the Daikyu? Yeah. I think it's I, the Daikyu. I think so. Yep. Um, Excellent. What was that on? Was that History Channel or? Uh, well, it was on YouTube. Oh, okay. It's actually, no, it's the Yumi. Bow. The Yumi? Well, that's just the word for bow. That's not what I want. Oh, okay, maybe it is Yumi. Anyway, yeah. it was really interesting because they are different lengths. So they talked about the strength and the technique to pull the bow for each of them. Right. Which yeah. I found very fascinating. Yep. And why the samurai bow is shorter and more compact, but, and like why the actual bow tip, not bow tips, um, arrowheads developed differently. Which right. Is fascinating. Cause it had to do with the armor, whatever. Yep. Um, and yeah, longbows are crazy. <laughs> yeah, the um... at the end of the day, <laughs> but they both um, shoot with the same fo like they both impact with the same. Oh yeah, force, so yeah. it, it all depends on like what your goal is, because mm -hmm. um, using saying one bow is better than another is kind of silly when they are made for accomplishing different things. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, the, the one that my fiance has, um, can shoot through armor and, uh, they proofed some armor with it. Um, cause, oh, cool. uh, we have buddies who have armor and they're like, I want to see if your arrow will shoot through it or, you know, if my armor will withstand it or, <laughs> yep. um, so we learned some things, uh, and then it definitely can like pierce like a car. Um, thankfully I didn't have to learn that one, um, <laughs> but I definitely have made executive decisions on behalf of where the bow is allowed to be shot. Right. Um, <laughs> That's good. Um. Keeping things safe in the neighborhood. Executive yep. decisions. <laughs> also, I found... I found the documentary... Yeah. It's um it was by Timeline. Okay. World History Documentaries, which is like a British Yep. um company, I believe. Yeah, I wish I had more cool, cool. like bow facts, but um that's really my my fiance and my brother especially. They're um my brother was en route to go to the Olympics for archery at one point in time. Wow. Yeah. So he's I'm the swords person. He's the he's the bow person. He Excellent. I'm always like he's the one that knows that. Though I will say there was a brilliant moment in time at one point when my brother was probably like a teenager yeah. and I had gone off to college and come back and he was out shooting his bow in the backyard. And he looked at me and he was like, I bet you can't even hit a target anymore. And I took his bow and I was filled with just like, I, I had not shot a bow in forever. Yep. But I was filled with the, the rage of an elder sibling that right. has been wrong. <laughs> and so I took Challenge the bow. Challenge accepted. <laughs> and I, I shot it three times and three times I hit right, like I hit the mark perfectly. Excellent. And then I placed it down because I knew... I knew what I, hubris. I <laughs> and I just yep. walked away. <laughs> yep. That's fantastic. Yeah, that's that's the perfect time to walk away. And right I can then. relate to that as yeah. an older sister. I have done very <laughs> similar things. 
<laughs> or my accuracy is like heightened. <laughs> yeah, that's definitely uh, definitely good. Just gonna quickly interrupt and say you got the first layer down. Woo. So I've tried to sort of get a fairly random yet consistent spread of those around the the shirt. And the next step is gonna be painting the green fronds. Hmm. Yep. I'm gonna try to okay. get the same amount of purple on the other side of his head. <laughs> yep. That's my goals. <laughs> so I just noticed that after after we mentioned the mermaids having a tank, um, oh, I, I finally got it. Josh Potter was probably thinking that, that it had like a like an M1 Abrams or something. <laughs> no, not quite. I'd like um, to see some mermaids in an actual tank. Yep. Tim said he, he prefers the free range mermaids. Mm -hmm. uh, if you haven't if you haven't seen it, if you don't have uh, young daughters, uh, they're <laughs> H, there's H2O, and then there's, um, oh, I, it's, I've forgotten the name of it now. But it's another mermaid series that's basically in the same, set in the same location, or a similar location, with, um, yeah, it's, it's filmed in Australia, on the Gold Coast. That seems to be the place to film mermaids. Yeah. Well, it's wonderful scenery. Lots of white sandy beaches and clear water. Looks great. Perfect for mermaids. Mako mermaids? Mako mermaid? Mako? Yep. Mako mermaids. Like the shark. Like the shark, exactly. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Jason said, my bow facts are generally confined to Pathfinder and D&T statistics. <laughs> That's cool. Yep. Uh, Josh says Ohio and Michigan Ren Fests are the best fests. Sounds like a challenge. They seem like <laughs> they would have very nice weather. Oh, perfect uh, Ren Fest weather. Yeah. Yep. Probably. Nice and. Um, and Lucafio is uh, pining about the uh, the loss of the Black Point location for the Northern California Ren Fair. Okay, I'm going to grab some Caliban Green. Where is it? There we go. Okay, I'm using the air paint because I used, I accidentally left my layer paint at home. So I'm just going to get this out and see how it, how it looks. Um, it might be a little bit thin, so I might need to, the other thing I'm worried about is um, looking at the tone of those. Let me see if I can point to it. There we go. On the shirt, there. Um, to get that good um, contrast against the, the pink, I might need to add a little black to that. And then when I highlight, I'm gonna add a little bit of yellow and maybe a little bit of ivory, but nobody's surprised by that. And this black will also um, help sort of uh, the opacity of the green. Painting on the Caliban green air paint. So it's made for sort of putting it through an airbrush so it's a little bit thinner than usual. Um, it's kind of important to get the, the opacity working. So these, these particular leaves are quite a bit larger than the, the white leaves so I get to make them a little bit thicker and a little bit more palm frond like I think so that's gonna be a bit tougher I might just need to place down the the shape of the big leaf and then sort of do the highlights on top of that might be the way to go this also means that I can paint over the top of those some of those white, white leaves. Front. That'd be cool. Yeah. I did some uh, archery when I was in high school. 
and we actually end, ended up buying a um, compound bow. All right. But, uh, I think it was like like a 140 pound draw, but a 60 pound, no, maybe it was only 120 pound draw with a 60 pound hold. So it was just a much shorter sort of bit for the draw, which was good. <laughs> Made it a little bit easier to, to hold on to. But yeah, I never tried the, uh, like a proper longbow at all. I think that'd be pretty exciting. That'd be good. How's it coming along? It is coming along. So if I turn to this side, yeah, you can see where those shadows are. Are you doing a little bit of uh, like black lining there? Yeah, except for the dark, dark purple. Hmm? It's purple? Yeah, it's a very dark purple. Oh, wow. Um, and then I'm going to go back through with the light, light green, and we'll see. We'll see how this comes along. I think it's looking good. I think it's, um, it's really helping that, uh, the, like the green and the, like the bright green pop. Yeah, I really like the, and it's a little, um, overexposed up there, but it's really, uh, I really like using purple. Uh, as a shade, as a shadow. Yep. Um, I think it has a little bit more dimension than just using black or gray or a darker color than uh, the color that you're using. Right. I think you're right there. It does, it does give that a feel. So it's very blue purple, isn't it? It is. It's a very, yeah. very blue purple. It's a cool toned purple. And I think since the lime green has the yellow, it gives it very much that very uh, contrast. It gives it that contrast, I guess. Right. Very almost like glowy kind of vibe. Yeah. It's looking good. Looking good. Okay. Nice. I think with these uh, sort of bandoliers of bullets or the ammo belts, over the, I don't think we really decided what they were last week. Um, now with these big leaves, I get to paint some in just areas where you're only going to see half the leaf. So they get to get to hide them behind the uh, accessories or the, the kit. Webbing, that's the word I was looking for. Hide it behind the webbing. So I think on the screen there, they almost, those big leaves almost look black. They definitely have some green in them, which we'll start to see as I move to just using the green and add a little bit of um, yellow and ivory in. Yep, <laughs> Jason says purple and green, villain. Very much so. Is that orange? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, these are very... Very villain colors. I got to use the um, I got to use that because Disney tells us so line on the oh. weekend. Yep. We were driving past um, something and there was a sign in the window. It was like a little neon sign that like had two words. I can't remember what the words were. One was in like bright neon green, and one was in purple. And I was like, oh, that's evil, huh? Disney tells us so. Disney said it's evil. Must be evil. Must be. So, let me get a little bit more of the green out. Yep. So the color scheme definitely says, tells us that, uh, that she's evil. 
However, the um, I think oh, that's something I haven't done. I didn't read out the uh, the st her story on the back. Oops. Oh. I might have to. I might have to do that later in the show. You have to use your best voice. Hmm. Can you use my gruff voice. Yeah, your best voice. Best voice, indeed. No one knows Sergeant Titanica's true identity. Perfect. That one? Okay. Yeah, that one. Cool. Exactly that one. <laughs> exactly that one. We'll come back to that one later. Cool. Okay. Yep, I can't. As I was maybe a little bit worried. Can't quite see that um, dark green, so I'm going to mix in a little bit of yellow into it. Let's look at these. some minis. Are we gonna oh, look yeah. at some minis? Miniatures. Is it that time already? It's that time. Oh my goodness, I'm a little bit worried I won't finish. Ding dong. <laughs> okay, let's look at some minis. What have we got first? Woohoo! Oh, excellent. Ooh. There you mean. The Perceptor. So this is a, a Monster Apocalypse mini from uh, Ayumi, who is a uh, lava painter in the the chat. Looks like it's absolutely glowing. YouTube chat. It does, doesn't it? Looks fantastic. One of my favorite things in inside those, so inside the um, sort of circle in the middle of the head there, and like the bits of the arms there, are like there's like a little flecking of white, which gives it a really interesting kind of kind of look. As I say, there's a little bit of a, like like a, a glow plasma sort of feel. Kind of. There's something, yeah. It feels like yeah. there's something sort of rolling around in there, where some of it's a little bit darker than other bits of it. It's like a an energy. Yeah, but it's also it also has a bit a little bit of a like a nebula kind of look at yep. the same time. So, but yeah, it definitely looks uh, looks really nice. Very creepy. Great work, Yumi. And I love the blue, particularly on the feet. That nice yeah. bright blue. Slight tinge of slight tingy of green in there, but uh, yeah, looking beautiful. Nice work. Another. Oh, more Monster Apocalypse. Excellent. Did we uh, we asked everybody, didn't we? So no, actually, faded, I we didn't. Should have. I should have. I, I, I thought we did it on the show. I thought we asked on the show. The texture that is on that um, exoskeleton. Yeah. I guess yep. you would call it. That's a really nice texture. It's you would expect almost to go for the shiny, but I really like how uh, like it just looks very natural. Right. Looks almost like the kind of bug creature that would could hide and be a leaf, though I suspect that one is supposed to be very large and scary. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's probably about this size. Yeah. <laughs> just if Chris's hand is similar size to mine. But uh yeah, looking very cool. I love the, um, this is a comment on the sculpt, I love the, the little sort of vestigial arm that's coming out from the armpit, <laughs> just under there. Looks super cool. But uh, but yeah, I, I agree with Gretchen. I think that uh, the texture on the, um, the carapace is looking really cool. But yeah, excellent. Looks great, Chris. Nice work. Oh, Clive has been painting up uh, kicks a uh, hobgoblin from a Kickstarter by Creative Sculpt Studio. Interesting. That that face is kind of it's very troll like. Crazy. <laughs> but yeah. Um, no, looking good there, there, Clive. I think uh, key key thing is neatness. I always talk about that being uh, most important thing, and you've got you know, that that going on there. Everything's where it uh, where it should be, but yeah, I like it. Looking good. Nice one. Oh, Chris Gorka has uh, painted up a blight drone. The Death Guard. Nice. So these things are really very cool. Um, Chris has done something really interesting on this that um, that we can't see and can't quite see in this shot, but um, between the the sort of green armor plates you can see there's like a really deep um 
reddish pinky kind of look. Yeah. Yeah. What almost everybody else, myself included, um, for the uh, all the fleshy parts. So behind at the back of that carapace, there's a big fleshy blob kind of thing. Um, <laughs> we've, we've done it. Uh, Sort of almost every other one I've seen has done it with a very pale, sickly kind of flesh, um, stretched and twisted and tortured. But um, yeah, Chris has gone for this much deeper, almost like it's almost like like a flayed flesh. Yeah. But because he hasn't put like a gloss varnish on it, it's not um, it's not flayed flesh kind of thing. So it's kind of it's really interesting how your mind goes well it look kind of looks like this but it kind of not, doesn't look like that it goes back and forth but so it's a really nice sort of alien feel or demonic alien feel to it <laughs> so um I agree. yeah big thumbs up for that chris it's very cool but yeah looks great nice work the, the color also reminds me of a bruise like a bruise, a bruise. Oh, yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Which yep. I think adds to the like flayed, yeah, skin definitely adds to that feel. But yeah, nice work. Definitely good. Oh, this is the uh, younger Ramor as that Jason's working on. Looking very cool. Ramor as Ramor as. He had mentioned that he was inspired by your orange. Um, by my orange back as well. Yes. Very cool. <laughs> yep. Very it does nice. have a, it does have that really sort of warm, um, almost lava flow kind of feel down the back, down like particularly a bit that's coming off the crest and coming down to the head. I feel like it's the it, it, critters that do that are automatically scary because you're like that's a danger color. Yep. <laughs> Definitely. But now looking great there, Jason. Very nice. I like uh, definitely a great choice there. Good. Oh, Joseph. Looking cool. It's been chipping away at this guy. This is a um, from the Skaven um, army for uh, Warhammer. This looking I very felt cool. very proud that I could name the army. Yeah. The Skaven. Skaven. I was like, oh, I know that. Wait, yeah. Very cool. I'm learning. You are indeed. <laughs> no, that's great. Um, yeah, this is a it's a really interesting scheme that uh, Joseph's gone for here. It's quite a bit different to the st sort of standard Skaven scheme. Skaven generally go for like browns and blacks and um, kind of glowing green kind of look. Um, very dirty sewer rat kind of feel. But this one has got... Quite a bit of that it's Japanese kind of feel. Yeah, very clean. Um, that gray, um, to the gray uh, skirt, the white shirt underneath that red armor. For me, it's just, just saying it, it's very... Um, samurai? Very samurai. Yeah, very um, samurai. What's the... Uh, uh, who are the, the foot soldiers? Ashigaru. Very Ashigaru kind of feel, because um, they had a lot of very plain, like breastplates and and all. Uh, but uh, yeah, looking very cool. I'm liking your work on this, Joseph. Doing nicely. Josh, it up Miss Scarlet, Wild West Madam. I like what he did with the flowers. Yep. It's very folksy. It is, isn't it? Yep. It's definitely. Uh, do you think it's, it's, is it a dress that she had made in uh, Kansas City? Or did she, or did she, did she order it from the Sears catalog? <laughs> Which of these things was it? But no, I, I agree with, uh, with the question there. You've done a great job on the, those flowers there. Josh, looking very cool. And yeah, and also the, the highlights on the, um, kind of the, the ruffle, not not ruffles, ruffles too a little bit too extreme, but the uh, along around the lower part of the blue dress there. Yeah. The folds, the they're not intense folds, so your highlights are intense, which is good. 
Um, but yeah, she looks looking very cool. And it looks like she knows how to use that uh, Winchester. Very confident with it. Yep. Maybe she's taking it off somebody. You get this back later. <laughs> yep, nice work, Josh. Oh, oh, JT's Plague Burst Crawler. This is looking very nasty and, and grim. This is when we were talking before about some disgusting color schemes. Um, yeah, this is very much in that, that vein. I think the, uh, that sort of deep black green that's your base color for this JT. Looks really cool. And uh, all of those little pock marks that you've picked out with that um, almost greenish uh, sort of yellow ichor, yeah, yellow slime. Look very cool. Very nice. And because you've got th that dark green, it's got a lot of, it feels like it has a lot of blue in it. It's working well against that, uh, that brass trim. Very nice. Great work. Oh, sorry, and as well, I just noticed the uh, like the texture along the bottom of the that big dozer blade at the front. So it's been grinding through a lot of mud and muck on the battlefield. Oh, the base color is called sewage water by Minotaur. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I could totally believe that. That looks great. Nice work, JT. Roger, uh, getting ever closer. Monumental monsters. The Jin, the Kraken, and the Gorio. Gorio. Go, Gorio. I'll get it right in a minute. But uh, yeah, looking very cool. Great colors on these as well. So Roger, if you're still in the chat, was it a lot of fun to switch up to these monsters and be able to do them sort of individually rather than working through the all of the warriors? Because I know that uh, you felt like that was a little bit of a grind to get through all of those. I don't know, but they look uh, cool. Actually, on the um, the gin on the left, um, Roger's uh, flesh sort of uh, color there is very similar to the flesh we were talking about from uh, Chris Gawker's Plague Burst. Uh, sorry, um, Blight Drone. But yeah, looking great. Excellent work, Roger. Almost there. <laughs> uh, the Kraken was all contrast paints. That's cool. I'm trying to think that would be, uh, would be a thematic blue. The Violin Turquoise. Is that what it's called? Ooh. But uh, yeah. I don't have my pink colors memorized nice. like you do. Yeah. I have to remember when I need to go and restock them. <laughs> so, super important. But yeah, very cool. Uh, Sebastian's uh, working on a quick paint test for my Rusty Templars. Interesting. I think this is called the, um, so the armor color is a very, is black or a very dark, um, very dark metal. I think it's more black, uh, but yeah, this rust and dust kind of settled in the crevices looks uh it looks very cool and that the chipping on the edges um that bright silver looks great but that the tarnished arm and the the chest eagle going for that um sort of brassy look with the verdigris on it is very cool too i'm guessing you're just going to do that on the right arm and chest eagle of all of them i think uh yeah fun choice looking good nice work Okay, yep. Tim was talking about uh, using the contrast paints for um, non-metallic metals. So looking at the uh, that shield trim there and the uh, little bit at the top of the banner to see that, uh, that gold. So uh, Tim, you'll have to let us know what colors you used for those. Did you start with the Nasdrag yellow or did you use um, the Iandin yellow? I'm gonna guess Nasdrag because that's the one that has the um, the brown pigments in it, All right. and the iandin yellow has the orange pigments. So they both have yellow 
um, medium. So um, the shading is the you get sort of where you get the difference. I think this is a but, really good example of all the different ways you can use uh, gray tones and colors in like the white gray family. Right. And yep. have them all still be distinct. Right. Yep. Yep. Definitely. But yeah, looking great. Nice work, Tim. Very cool. Thanks for sharing. Oh, sorry. Uh, Tim said, sorry, if we can just go back for a second, Leona. Yeah. Uh, Tim said the gold is just snake bite leather only for a brass look. The armor is white, black, and gray wet blended on the model. Yep. I would be tempted, um, Tim, on the, those breastplates, they've got like a, they come up to a sort of a, a ridge that runs down the center. I'd be tempted somewhere on there. I'm not sure whether it's, whether you'd want to do it on the, the left side or the right side, but I'd add a little bit more shadow in there just so that you've got that, um, so that, that ridge can form that nice sort of bright catching the highlights kind of feel. But yeah, excellent. Cool, thanks for that, Leona. Oh, Lucario has painted a uh, a knight. Is this a dwarf knight? <laughs> I think it might be. It feels quite short. But yeah, I like that. It's the um, the heraldic symbol, symbol Lucario, is that uh, your family house? I'm not sure, but it looks very cool. Very neatly, uh, neatly painted on there. But yeah, looking good. I'm also liking the highlights on the, um, like the green tabard. Mm -hmm. It's looking quite cool. Doing that on the front there. Yep, nice work. That's the last one. Okay, cool. Fantastic work, everybody. Thank you very much for sharing those. Um, so I think we're gonna, did you grab some of those from the group or were they all from submissions? Okay. Submissions. The group and submissions. So Leona will shortly pop the uh, the link for the form into the group. Oh, there we go. Into the chat. So you can submit uh, miniatures and give all the appropriate information. Uh, Josh says that's an insomnia warrior. Short night. Uh, Cafio used army painter. White highlights over layers of darkening gray shades. 25 millimeters from an old game. Oh, sorry, yes, we should have looked at that. Could you um, pop that back up for a second, Leona? Sorry. Cool, we were talking about the uh, the chain mail and the, the non metallic metal highlights there. So you can see those in place here. See, so on the top of the arm there, it's definitely a lot brighter than the, the underside. Oh. So, excellent. Nice work, thanks for that. Ooh. Hooray! So, now we're back to Gretchen, cool shading on Gretchen's model there. What have you been working on? Adam purple. <laughs> <laughs> all purple, all the time. So you can see that. What's the name of the purple? It's coming along. Well, technically, it's blue. It's ultramarine blue, but oh, okay. it's. Uh, oh, it does have does have a very purpley. It's a very dark, deep it. kind of uh, blue, but um, yeah. So I'm going through and I'm adding that shading, and then I'm going back with the green to pick up where, um, well, the teal and the green where I kind of lost some of the dimension, and then. Hopefully I can speed up. <laughs> <laughs> I got I got most of his face most of his face done. I still need to go back and get those horns so that that's all neat and tidy. Um, but I, I'm try I'm trying to speed run, guys. I'm trying. Cool. Um, but now it's looking good. Came along nicely. And I think um, last week we were talking about, or we might have mentioned at some point that we were a little bit worried about if we got paint onto the base. Mm -hmm. One of the cool things that you can do is just get in there with your fingernail and scrape it off. Easy to do. 
very easy. So I'm not sure if we can start to see the... Yeah, I think on the sleeve here you can start to see some of the, the fronds painted in. So I just need to come back and paint those a little bit brighter. I'm going to shine off the lights, sorry about that. I just got to find, basically find where I put them all around the shirt. I'm trying to remind myself that I don't need like perfect, absolute detail on every single inch of this guy. Yep. Because that'll probably be a little too busy. Yeah. <laughs> yep, definitely. But then part of me is like perfection. Um. <laughs> You're kind of torn between getting it done and getting it done perfectly. All the time. All the time. Yeah. Sometimes it can be tough as well, knowing sort of which parts to not worry about so much. Yeah, I definitely uh -oh. want his face to stick out and I definitely want that ridge on his back to kind of steal the show a little bit. Cool. Okay. I just mix a, quite a bit more yellow into the, the green. So I can start to really highlight those fronds a little bit more. You can see those starting to come out there. <laughs> Don't let perfect get in the way of good. I like that. I am definitely a perfectionist if I... I think that's part of the good thing about this show being like only <laughs> a set time limit <laughs> is that at that point I kind of have to let go of that, um, of that perfection. Yep. And be like, no, this is what we got. This is the time limit we have. Yep. Go forth and conquer. There was a time a few years ago, I'd say a few, probably like five or six years ago, when I'd been competing in painting competitions and I realized that to get better and to start to try and place in some of the competitions that I would need to um, spend a lot more time on my models. So rather than spending like one or two or three hours I was gonna have to spend like 20 or 30 hours on a model and at that point I kind of realized well actually I don't mind only spending an hour or two on a model so maybe I won't compete in competitions anymore and I haven't I don't think I've really I don't think I've entered a I might have entered like one or two painting competitions since then but without it certainly haven't been done haven't been entered with a uh, a specific miniature that I painted for that competition in mind I appreciate how that went from like a, a kind of set you up to be like and then I, I learned that I needed to do this in order to win instead of being like and then I did you're like and then I didn't <laughs> <laughs> yep um did you guys see Tim's question? Oh no, we didn't. No, what is Tim's question? Do you think the steel look for the contrast NMM I'm trying would look better with a, a light blue base instead of the gray? Uh, I'm gonna say no to that. Um, I think going with the gray is good. Um, I think on these particular minis because they've got that it's that older um broken decayed decaying kind of look to the metal um i would actually suggest working a little bit of brown into the shading um to give that darker sort of almost rust starting to rust kind of look um 
I think that's where I'd go with that. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Uh, Jason says, do you find that uh, the larger the mini, the more perfection you expect from yourself? Uh, that's, a, that's a good, probably. Probably. I haven't really thought about it in that in terms of that, but you know now that I think about it, I think I see more detail and more like things that I can do or want to do. Sort of more opportunity. Yeah, I'm model. like yes, do more. Right. Um. Yeah, that's an interesting one. I'm not sure. Uh, Josh suggests that you might might enjoy listening to Uncle Adam over at Tabletop Minions. Uh, it's a lot of good hobby advice. So it could be good. Yeah, uh, Adam knows what he's talking about. He's good. Uh, Lukaku says, have to run. Ongoing food prep for Saturday beckons. So my break is over. I may have voted for the Magnum PI shirt, but the purple looks good, Dave. <laughs> now imagine her hair oh, her with soul-stealing red hair. <laughs> Tim says he'll give that one a try. So yeah, um, just experiment a little bit with um, pushing a little bit of uh, brown into those shadows. Um, if you don't like it, you don't have to sort of carry it on. Start on the maybe something on the back or a smaller armor plate somewhere would be the way to go. Okay. It was weird. I just started to look for the the reference photo down here on front of me. <laughs> in front of me. Nope, it's up on the screen. So the shape of these, um, these particular palm fronds isn't exactly the same, but I think in the end it'll give it a, a pretty similar kind of feel. Which is really what we're going for. It's tough to sh shrink down the, uh, the Hawaiian shirt pattern this size What's the yeah that's a very complicated pattern to just yeah try to but hey this is this is my uh this is your second time doing that oh second time doing a hawaiian show, show. didn't you do one for uh when did we do a... when we did firefly oh yeah 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 for wash it washes yeah. yeah i did a shirt for wash that's right I don't know, maybe it's just like, uh... I think deep in your soul, you just really want a Hawaiian shirt. I, I really don't. I think you do. <laughs> I think you're just like, you know, what I really desire. Yeah? Bright, colorful, whimsy. <laughs> yes. Because as we know, my soul is full, full, I tell you, of whimsy. It is, deep down. I'm not sure you got that right. Have you met me? Have you met me, Gretchen? Yeah. <laughs> That's how I know. Oh. Curses. <laughs> I've been found out. There we go. I just realized that when I was mixing that you could see me mixing through the through the bass. Uh -huh. cool. That's funny. Okay. One thing I'll do once I've um, finished with the these little lines is probably go back and around the edge of those leaves and uh, paint some purple back in, just in different areas, so it has a little bit less of a regular kind of look. There's a point on some of those, um, some of those on the, which way is it? There we go. On some of the fronds in that picture. We can see the purple going in and through. Okay, so add a little bit of that. Get some mixed up. Now with these, the Warlord purple is um, quite, thin 
uh, much like the um, that Caliban green air paint is then so it's not a great coverage so mixing a little bit of the um, hex lichen in there will give it uh, some good coverage and then I can come and just paint that in a couple of areas along the edge of those those leaves that I painted earlier so if we can they can't quite pick that up on the, on the screen but I'll know and that's the important part right of course and we always take better pictures too that's true so there we go paint some of those in It was a lot of fun. Like half hmm? of the sky <laughs> has the shadows on him. I'm like, okay, okay, I can do this. I but can do this. We have plenty of time. Plenty of time. You gotta remember, I've still gotta paint her hair and flowers. I still have all of his horns. But that's okay. That's okay. It's fine. And that's okay. We got this. The horns and the shadows? Horns, the shadows, half the shadows. and the very, the very end of the highlight. But. Okay. Because the rest of this isn't having, like, I'm, I'm doing more of, like, an ink wash kind of vibe. Okay. For some of these larger uh, bits of shadow. Right. Because I realize I don't really have to, I can do that and then I can go back and tidy up some of the bits of... Uh, The shadow? Yeah. Right. I wasn't sure if you wanted me to throw the word in there. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm speed painting. Super focused. I'm doing my best, y'all. Cool. There we go. Okay. I'm quickly then going to paint the, paint the flowers. You've got to pick some good spot for those. And then I've got, I brought in a special, special treat. Oh. It's not food. Well, you just ruined it. So, I get to, I get to show, show mm -hmm. some folks. A little bit of a uh, preview of uh, something for free RPG day. Uh, coming up in October in the US. Exciting. Which would be very cool. Yes. So I won't show it to you just yet until I've got these darn flowers painted. There we go. Okay. So now I get to place these in random spots as well. And I think I'm going to start with, rather than starting with the light gray um, base for them, I'm going to start with the uh, ivory as the base, which looks quite really bright white there on screen, but it's definitely uh, got a yellow, yellowish vibe to it. As ivory tends to do. So these are, is it five petals? In there? I think so. And this is going to be the weirdest part as well, painting over those fronds I just spent all that time working on. Very weird. They might go and paint. Um, so I just painted a little five pointed sort of figure there, little stick figure kind of thing. There we go. So you can just see it there on her shoulder. So I'm going to go and pick a few spots around the shirt and paint those on first and then I'll come back and fill them in and then paint the yellow um, bits in the middle. So I'm getting on to doing that. This elbow looks like a great place for it. There we go. 
one of the things as well is I haven't spent a lot of time painting um, you can see underneath there I haven't spent a lot of time painting patterns on the underside where the darker purple is mainly because you're going to be see, looking at it like from this this angle most of the time so as long as uh, those areas are covered it should be good um. yeah I think that like the illusion is there yeah your yeah. brain kind of fills it in fills yep. it in I think so Okay. Okay, yeah, so enough for us to start with. We got one, two, three, four. Maybe pop one of them back here as well. Don't want it to seem like I'm copying out by just doing four. Mm -hmm. Got to do five, right? Okay. And then come back and um, get that petal shape around the edge. So just flush that out a little bit. Really, any sort of freehand that you're painting on to a miniature, like we're doing here, is um, is all about painting on sort of the rough shape, the rough approximation of the shapes of the pattern that you're trying to work with. So, um, looks quite bright at the moment there. I have to paint a little bit of the purple back into those. Um, so it looks like we've got some overlapping petals. There. But when you're painting um, shapes over a, a base color, um, just make sure you keep some of that base color handy in case you make your shapes a little bit too big or they're a little bit sort of jagged around the outlines or not quite exactly the way you wanted them. Um, so yeah, if you have that uh, base color as well you can do your correction at the same time as you're working on it so now I'll do some highlights at the the tips of those petals like that and then put the yellow right so the yellow in the center not picking up great on the camera, but let me turn that around. Okay, now that's looking all right. Now just four more to go. <laughs> we can do it. I believe in you. Thank you. I appreciate your faith. we got one here. Um, Josh says patterns are difficult at small scale. Even camo patterns can look bad if it isn't if care isn't taken. Yep, agreed. I think one of the toughest camo patterns, um, or the the toughest type of camo pattern to try at a small scale now is um, digital camouflage. Oh yeah. Because of those all those square. A lot of square edges, which is tough to to get with that that paintbrush to get super accurate. So, if you have the option and you're painting a camo camouflage scheme, pick a camouflage scheme that doesn't have hard edges or right angles on it. Don't always get that opportunity, but if you can. There we go. A little 
bit of correction. And we're good. I hope. Kind of weird painting this flower on the on their elbow. Makes me think of like it. I don't know if you've seen people have like a compass tattooed on their elbow. I've not seen a, a compass tattooed on an elbow. Okay. That is interesting. That's an interesting place. Yep. I think I've seen, I've seen a few. I think, but yeah. So now anytime I paint something on an elbow, it just <laughs> makes me think of that. <laughs> no particular reason, just that it's elbow related, I guess. Elbow and art related. Here we go. So that's all the petal shapes now. And just the highlights and the... Okay, I'm gonna ask, as you're a gardening person. Uh-huh. What are, what's the, what are the middle pieces of the flower? The called? stamen. Is it the stamen? Mm -hmm. Is that the, the, the bits in the, in the middle? Yeah. Okay, cool. I'm surprised I know the answer to that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> It's not actually from gardening that I know the answer to that. It's from biology okay. class. Okay. I think I probably did that in bio biology class, but of course that was like a hundred years ago. <laughs> there we go. Yep, that, not showing it quite up on camera quite as well as I like, but it's a nice vibrant yellow which works well against that, um, against the purple of the shirt. And there we go. Hawaiian shirt complete. I do have to admit, I think this was a little bit more fun than just the plain red with the white. I think I so, I definitely too. think it was more fun. Yeah. It looks awesome. It came out pretty well. Huzzah. And now, the hair. Do we go for blonde? I say go for it. Okay. Let's go for blonde. Adding all these little highlights, which I think is looking very nice. Where'd it go? I didn't get it out of my... Oops, there we go. <laughs> the flowers are also packing heat. They have pistols. <laughs> Maybe that's what they're called. Is that the, the pistols of a flower? At... The pistols and stamen? I don't know. Yeah. Flower. Flower biology. Oh, JT, you said uh, got to run. Have a good night. Have a good one, JT. Have a good night. Hope we caught you before you left. Elbow art. It's a new art discipline. Totally agreed, Josh Potter. Totally agreed. So for my blonde hairs, I always do... Where is it? There we go. Uh, so... There we go, I'll turn it the right way. Uh, beige brown is my base coat. And uh, highlight up by mixing in some ivory. Just kind of the, the way I do it to get a um, quite a natural kind of look. Okay. 
try and do it this way rather than um, I don't use actual yellow in blonde hair which I think sometimes people do quite a bit so gives a much more sort of subtle look So, get this over the whole hair, and then I get to start painting lots of uh, lots of lines. Ooh, what have you moved on to? I Gosh. am highlighting with that bright yellowy lime green, and uh, then I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna do the horns. So, if I look on this side, there you go. Yeah, excellent. So, kind of did more focus on the face and that nice ridge back here, and then um, on the rest of the body, instead of going around each individual scale, I did more of a wash with that dark purpley blue. Right. And then now I'm just picking out um the scales specifically where i want the highlights and dabbing them as that bright super lime green cool um that's looking good it's kind of weird across from across the table here mm -hmm. it looks like you're painting with like almost white <laughs> so nope Got all sorts of colors going on right Interesting kind of feel and colorful, um, but excellent. He is looking very radical, which was the goal. Yeah. So, what do you think about those horns? Still feeling the black? I am. I gotta tell you. I think maybe some um, some gray highlights. I think that'll do. Sort of the, at the top, like just a. A couple of uh, like a line, a line or two. Line or so, yeah. Yeah. I'm I was doing that, that because as if I had the horns the same as the the pterosaur. I'm definitely feeling that. I think I'm gonna clean it up with the black a little bit, just the yep. places at the base of those horns and stuff where things got a little messy from my little speed run going on here. <laughs> right. Cool. Yeah, I think uh, just a little, little quick highlight. It doesn't have to be the gray. Doesn't have to be particularly bright. It's just something that's gonna. Dave, add a little bit of subtle did depth. you did you want to talk about your stuff? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We're coming right. towards the end of the show. What have we got? Eight forty-six. Okay, yeah, I completely forgot. Thank you for reminding me. Even after I said it, I will show it. Uh, okay. Ooh. Okay, so we've got the base color down for her hair there. There'll be a few spots where I've missed. I'll just catch those. I'll talk about this and then come back and finish the hair and she'll be done. And the best part is we don't have to do anything to the basing. That's true. We don't have that last minute. Oh, the base is wet. <laughs> Okay, um, cool. So I'm just going to move this to the side for a sec. And maybe if you're able to zoom out and pull this in. So um, last year, uh, myself and um, Mantic Games and uh, the Army Painter did a, we put together a booklet for Free RPG Day. Uh, and in that, we showed how to paint. Um, oh, maybe I should turn this around. We showed how to paint uh, Mantic Games Terrain Crate Library. So yes. um, we did like a three different three different ways to paint the bookshelves kind of thing. Um, and it was a little booklet. So if your store participated in Free RPG Day, you would have got like a bundle of seven of those booklets, and uh, the store also would have got a bundle of seven different bookshelves or things from there. The wizard study 
box from um, Mantic Games. So this year we're doing it again. Uh, only this time we're also the, the thing that we're working with um, that I'm working with uh, the Army Painter on is a Game Master box set, which is a um, basically a box that has everything you need to to start making a dungeon, your your own dungeon. So it's um, I've got it here, but you can see on the, the sides. This is a uh, foam, um, and it's called this is XPS foam, which is extruded polystyrene foam. So this is essentially the same sort of foam as you see in those big uh, insulation sheets that they use for building. Right. You can pick them up at like Home Depot or Lowe's and that kind of stuff. So either in the blue sheets or the pink sheets or the green sheets, that kind of thing. Um, but you, these ones are five millimeter thick, so they're a lot easier to work with with like a hobby knife. Um, which you get in the box. Nice. Um, you, in the box, you also get a um, hot wire cutter, which is what I use to cut these circular shapes or semicircular shapes, because cutting those out with a knife would leave you with lots of like jagged edges. It would be very tough to do. Uh, but yeah, these were cut with um, with the hot wire cutter that comes in the Game Master box. Um, one of my favorite things that's in the Game Master box is the spray. So it comes with a spray paint that, like normal spray paint that you use to like spray furniture or spray your miniatures with. The propellant in that, in those, will eat away at XPS foam. So if you were to make a beautiful piece of scenery and then spray it with that kind of spray, it would melt and, dest and destroy the, the scenery. Um, so you want to avoid doing that. So normally, if you're using XPS foam, you have to go through and hand um, prime everything. But the Game Master set has their new terrain spray, which um, has a different formulation, and you can spray it directly onto the foam. And you can see, uh, where is it? Down here. Gotcha. So you can see like a little speckling there, where I didn't spray right up to the edge. You can see that how it hasn't affected the foam at all. And then you've got that. So the base coat, the, the, the primer coat for this was all done with that, that spray. Oh, nice. That's really good. It's not very good for using on miniatures because it's quite thick and would fill up a lot of detail on the miniatures. Um, but I think they, there's that warning is on the can as well, like don't use this on miniatures. Um, but it's really cool that it's on, uh, that you can use it on the foam. So yeah, I built this uh, little boss fight room, final chamber kind of thing. And so the booklet that we've done is uh, how to like make how to make this from the kit, and also how to paint the um, treasure piles. Cool. That are coming. So Mantic this time around are providing um, bundles of the treasure piles from there dungeon treasure box. Um, for this one, we also use some bits from the um, Dark Lord's Tower, I think it's called. Uh, this really funky uh, portal. So obviously, uh, and this I think is also from the Dark Lord's Tower. It's like a sacrificial altar. So you can imagine somebody being sacrificed here while wizards are summoning <laughs> some sort of demon to step out of the portal. Good stuff. You don't have to imagine that somebody's being sacrificed. That's up to you. <laughs> But um, the cool thing as well is that in the Game Master box, there's uh, all sorts of um, paint uh, that it's, they have um, like a thicker formulation, so it's perfect for dry brushing. Uh, but the colors match the colors from the Army Painter War Paints range, oh, that's which cool. is really cool. Yeah, so if you go through and you, you're like, oh, I just want to touch that, that area, or I want to paint a piece of scenery that has, like, I want to paint like this little... I'll get it into shot in a second. Where are we going? There we go. That has the same colors, so you know what colors to match with the, um, from the range, which is cool. So this was done with the, there are two base colors that come in a larger pot because you need larger pots when you're doing terrain. Um, and then some uh, smaller pots for the dry brushing colors to for the edges and so on. And then they have great um, subterranean wash 
which is like a dark green, sort of like a um, desaturated green wash. But they also have one called um, Grotto Slime. Uh, and so these little slimy bits that I've got down the walls oh. over here are, um, there's a base, uh, basically I basically painted the subterranean wash on first uh, and then mixed the subterranean wash and the grotto slime together to get a, to sort of highlight it a little bit. And then, and then those lighter parts that are along the, like the top edge of the stone blocks, it's just the straight grot grotto slime. So it's really neat, very cool. And I used some of the um, the subterranean wash as well around the the lower edge to give that um, sort of like shading, dirty, dirty mm -hmm. wall. That dirty wall kind of feel, yeah. yeah. And also, I had a question yep. in the chat. Uh, does that use, utilize any magnets? No, I haven't yes. used any magnets on this one. Um, you could, you could put magnets in it for sure. I um, feel like it would not be too hard. No, no, it'd be very easy, definitely. Uh, what I wanted to do with this is um, keep these separate, uh, both for photography purposes. So I'm gonna put a miniature, <laughs> put some miniatures on there for the, uh, for the booklet. We could shoot them kind of on an angle. Uh, looking in from the side would have been quite difficult if that was in the way uh, but also now I have that floor I can take those out I can get some more XPS foam and I can use this as like the floor of a tavern and I can oh, carve some yeah. XPS foam walls to be like uh, like the timber half timbered look right. so the timber cross braces with the stucco in between uh, so yeah I've got lots of sort of options there now or I could build some more dungeon walls I could do all sorts of stuff with it but yeah I That's noticed you also have like purple shading yep on yep the stones yeah so it, actually with the purple shading that was one that I did without um, using uh, so the, the purple that I use on there is the army painter purple tone Actually, the texture that I've got on there, you can see there, that was just, I went out to my garden and to, to find a rock and I ended up with a, a chunk of like tumbled um, concrete. And what you do is just push that, roll that into the um, the foam. Because normally the foam is, oh, that's super glary. But normally it's kind of flat like that. And so you can get that right, yeah, no, cool cool. texture just by rolling um, that's a really cool it. idea. Yep. Definitely cool. Uh, yeah, Bronchonaut says, when is free RPG day this year? Oh, there you go. Yeah, oh, nice. October 16th. Definitely so. It should be very cool. I think this year we've got... So we'll have that booklet going out to... 1100? Well, certainly... Printed 1,100 um, packs of them. So I think some stores will get a couple of packs and some stores will only get one, but there'll be about yeah, a thousand. Yeah, I think stores hmm? can still, I think stores can still sign up. Yeah. So make sure you talk to your friendly local game store. Yep. And let them know. But there's no, a lot of cool stuff. Check that out. They can be part of free RPG day. So yeah, they can uh, find it on online. Just type in free RPG day 2021. Uh, you'll get the date, you'll get information, all that sort of fun stuff. So it's pretty cool. One of the guys who is organizing it is uh, Paul Butler, who runs, um, who owns and runs um, games and stuff. Yeah. Our friendly local game store. So very cool. I'm almost done painting all his little nails. Yeah. Excellent. You have two minutes. Two minutes to do that. I can hair? do that. I can. I can <laughs> get at least all of the. I don't know about highlighted, but I can at least get them all painted. Question yep. for you, Dave, yep. about what you just showed. Does the book contain templates, or just basic processes? Uh, just basically uh, basic processes, is what it's uh, is what we're looking at there. 
So it's just ideas. It, it sort of talks through the process. Um, so I think for like for the it's got in there the um, floor. First thing I did was that texturing with the the concrete block, um, and then the next thing was drawing on the um, the grid. Because that's another thing as well. Like it, because we knew this was going to be used for role playing, we went with a, a one inch grid on it. But uh, if you're just if you're building terrain for anything else, you don't have to put that grid on. There's all sorts of things you can do. One of the cool things as well is that in the game master box, the um, the army painter guys have done a really cool um, booklet as well, which has a whole bunch of extra ideas. Um, they've got a lot of great uh, caverns stuff in there, so less of the neatly built dungeons and uh, dungeon walls and so on. You can get some great cabins and uh, that sort of thing. So I think they've done a couple of other. They've done a couple of other boxes as well. I, I don't think I know that they've done a couple of other boxes as well, but I'm trying to remember exactly which ones they've done. I think they've done like a like an Arctic tundra set where the um, like the spray primer rather than being that dark sort of greenish gray um, is uh, is a light blue. Um, they've done a desert, like an arid desert kind of look, where it's more of a uh, desert yellow. They've done a like a woodlands version as well, so for, like for making hills and rock formations and so on. And I think that spray is more of a like an oak brown kind of look. But uh, yeah, it, it, in that that booklet we, that we've put together, it also talks about. Um, there's a little bit on planning there. So, I mean, when we looked at this, it was like, there's a lot of foam. So that's not even all the foam that comes in the set. And they have extra foam um, foam packs that you can buy as well. But when I saw that, it was like, yeah, we're gonna do like a boss fight room rather than just a generic, um, generic dungeon room. All it's right. like a little bit more exciting. Oh, now I'm touching things. I'm touching. Touching things? Yeah, no. I need to <laughs> not no. touch things. All right, no highlights done, but. Okay. If you keep talking though for like 30 seconds. 30 seconds? I, I can keep, I'll, I'll try and do that. <laughs> while I'm painting the, uh, the one here. See, see, I have some real stuff to paint here. Oh, right? see, there, too, we, go. So there we go, there we go. We can make this work. We can make this work, guys. We can stretch it out just, uh, so everybody stop your clocks for the moment. <laughs> My, uh, the hair won't be quite as neat and tidy as I would like, but I think it'll still be, uh, still be all right. But I wonder if this is the first time she has been painted with a Hawaiian shirt. I'd like to think so. Okay. But yeah, definitely, uh, definitely check out free RPG day and all the cool stuff that's going to be in the in the kit this year okay there we go does that look all right good for blonde hair Ooh, yeah. that's great. nice yeah, okay and while Gretchen is just in the final touches I will read from the back of the box <laughs> Her there. Where are we? Where is she going to be in? Life safety. Shop. There we go. Here we go. Saving Gretchen's life. No one knows Sergeant Titanica's true identity, but numerous websites claim to know the origin of this enormous woman. Smaller details differ, but all sources agree that she was a highly decorated member of a Western military organization recruited by Green Fury leadership to take part in a dangerous experiment. By combining previously unknown plants found in the region from which the pterosaurs emerged with energies generated by crystals found in the impact craters of the Harbinger Comet, Green Fury scientists were able to spark massive growth in the cells of their volunteer's body and clothes, apparently. 
Most remarkably, Sergeant Titanica retained all of her mental abilities and has been leading the ragtag forces of her newfound friends ever since. That's nice. Yeah. She wasn't turned into a monster. That's cool. She's just a very, very big, very, very dangerous lady. The best kind. Definitely. All right. Ta-da, yep. yeah. Ta-da, ta okay, yeah. cool. <laughs> I, don't have to, I don't have to read from this card. I mean, if you'd like to, you <laughs> it's can. It's fine. <laughs> it's all good. I would have just been reading the rules, so. And I think I managed to not go. touch anything with wet paint from where I touched the... I, I'm, I paint right. messy. There we go. Cool. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. I think the, the crazy thing is like when you were painting last week, those, um, the orange work down the back, mm -hmm. because it had the, the most detail and had the, had the shading and the, the contrast. Mm -hmm. But this week, the purple, purplish blue that you put into the shading and the, bright green highlights have pulled that to be the contrasting part yeah and it's kind of it's kind of it's kind of flattened out those armor mm -hmm. panels a little bit it's really interesting it's really weird to see that does it remind you of the 90s of the 90s yeah i can't Is remember it radical? the 90s yeah Button? <laughs> Leon was like yes <laughs> Is it radical? radical oh it's a radical it's certainly radical yeah i can't remember a lot of the 90s so that's all. That's yeah. all we're getting. That Ooh. looks looks great. He looks awesome. Yep. I think that gray, those gray highlights on those um, on the horns look good. Nice they, and subtle. They better because that was, that's that was where, some that's quick work there. Some quick work. That was definitely great. That was some. I hope my hands are steady enough. My hands are shaking so that I have shaky hands. Um, and so did you sometimes brace? towards the end, of, yeah, I did. I was. I was bracing again. I had like I was like this. Cool. They still shake. <laughs> Excellent. That's good. Very cool. Nice. All right. Hooray. Ooh. We awesome did work. it. We did it. Over a period of two weeks, we painted some very awesome Monster Apocalypse minis. So excited. Thank you very much for um, prompting us to do this, Ayumi. Yes. By Thanks. posting all of your awesome Monster Apocalypse stuff in the group. Yes. I want to see everyone how everyone else paints these. Yep. So go out, grab some, paint them up. I want to see group. if anyone else attempts a Hawaiian shirt, and if so, which one? <laughs> well, you have to go for one now. Oh, yeah. Or if people go with the, the blue with the pink flamingos, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I say pink flamingos. They're I really want to see someone them. paint pink flamingos on a miniature. I just need it now. You need it now? Yeah, I'm, I'm throwing out a challenge. That's next time, next time around. <laughs> Next time we have a model that could possibly be wearing a Hawaiian shirt, we'll do that. Yep. But yeah, nice. All right, guys. Well, we'll see you next week. I'm, yep. Bye. <laughs> I was going to do the outro, but do, all right, do, we'll just leave. No, no, do the outro. Do the outro, I'm please. I'm Gretchen. <laughs> and I'm Dave. And we'll see you at your friendly local game store.